Okay, thank you again, Ben Woody. Uh, I'm going to really just pick up where I was at. So we are talking about the North Fork Water Treatment Plant. Uh, again, today we have uh, videos and still footage. I know everybody can't see that, so I'm going to try to explain that we, as we start. But I, I want to ground us a little bit. So again, North Fork Water Treatment Plant can provide water to our entire actual water system. Typically, it's going to provide water to about 80% of the system, and that's connected to what Mills River does, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but what I want to really get started, uh, we are looking at a, a video that is that is a still now, but this is, so we're going to start on September 30th. So September 30th was Monday, and that's a few days after the storm, and Monday was when we were finally able to get crews to our water distribution plant and equipment. So the first two days after the storm, we used that time, Public Works did, and water to clear debris and to get access to this property and this distribution system. Uh, we have a primary 36-inch and 24-inch line that comes out of the North Fork system. Uh, those two lines were washed away in 2004. Uh, they were washed away again in this storm, and, and we expect that. That doesn't surprise us. What you're looking at on this frame right now is a alternate or a redundant line that was installed. We'll call it a bypass water line as redundancy for another storm event that came. So I'll note this line, this 36 inch bypass water line, this was installed and engineered based on what happened in 2004. So this was built uh, to be able to withstand and I almost can't believe I'm saying this, a typical hurricane event. Um, this 36-inch bypass water line, this one line, if we can get this back in service, it can provide water to 80% of the actual water system. So this is a priority repair for us at this time. Um, for those that can see this image, what I would draw your attention to is on the upper right of the frame, you can see our drone operator. He's wearing a yellow vest. So again, that gives you a little bit of context of the damage that was done. And of course, this line was underground. So the red line, I'm now displaying a red line across the top of the creek bed. So this is a, normally a creek bed that our spillway spills into. Um, prior to this storm, you could go out there and with your shoes on, you and I, we could walk across this creek bed. So it's not a river, it's a creek bed. It doesn't even have a substantial amount of water in it at all times. So, um, and I'm going to show another image, and this is our drone operator. Again, this gives you a little bit of context. This is Mark, and he's probably about six feet tall. So what, what you see is this event washed away almost 25 feet of earth. So again, I want to, I want to reiterate that. That pipe was 25 feet in the ground. That earth is gone. So what we're showing you now is the what we call catastrophic damage to this bypass water line. And you see how large the pipe is. This, this gives context too. We, we might be able to fit Mark in part of that pipe even. And again, we have a picture of, of a kind of a typical human being stacked on top of another. So you can just see uh, the damage that this storm did to this portion of, of the uh, water system. And of course, the typical, the, the pipes I previously referenced, they're gone. We, I don't know that we've even found those yet. So, so I'm going to show another picture. So that is, um, so I am missing slides and pictures are out of order. We don't have the correct images and video stills up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best, or maybe we have a more recent version. I apologize for this, but I'll, I'll talk about North Fork. So what I what I will say is the pictures we initially showed that showed the damage they were from Monday, September 30th, and I, and I do have a picture, and I'll verbally talk about this that will show you. Uh, what the restoration to that water line looks like on October 3rd. So again, within three days, we have been able to make substantial progress on repairing that bypass line. 
And the picture that I hope I can show, what it will do is show you um, how we've been able to restore that line. And the one thing that we're doing is we're going to put an elbow in, and that's going to bury that line even deeper than it was. So we had it 25 feet under the ground. As we repair it, because we want to repair it to last, it's going to be more than 25 feet into the ground. And we're going to armor that line. So we're going to provide additional bracing. And so what will then happen is that 25 foot gorge that you basically saw once the pipe work is done for the bypass line, that will then be backfilled. So we'll put that 25 feet of earth back and where it will be is with a transmission line that's functional. Now, of course, we don't have to have all the backfill in place in order for the water line to be functional. So that line as of October 3rd uh, was more than underway in terms of its repairs. And I'm going to pause for a second. Are we able to get the other? Okay. And and if you can't, that's okay. I'll, I'll work with what we have. So. So what I'm going to do to maximize our time, I'm going to use this minute where we get the video and the stills up to talk about. Um, our Mills River water treatment plant. So I'm going to go to the end. So Mills River, um, that is our treatment plant that services uh, South Asheville, South Buncombe County, and portions of North Henderson County. Um, we have really good news on that plant. So that plant, um, it is uh, its raw water intakes and pumps are fully functional. So we have our Mills River plant up and running. It is fully functional. If you remember a few days ago, it was reduced capacity, two or three million gallons per day. We are producing five million gallons per day out of our Mills River uh, water treatment plant. Uh, we have charged the system, or at least near the plant, we have a pressure of 160 PSI, and that's what it needs to be. So it's operating at the pressure and the capacity that it needs to. Um, that's great news, but I want, I want to also give the caveat that the best that Mills River can do is provide water to about 20% of our water system. So we've got about 20% of the water system in water. Um, we still got a ways to go. And we actually have for that, we have our lab staff that is actively right now out sampling the water. We have to sample the water, get bacteria testing, and that is our process in order to return that system to potable water. I can't give you a timeline because that is dependent on the result of that sampling. And I think it's a pretty rigorous test before we can say it's potable. So we're back. Are you looking That's what I want, yep. So I'm gonna finish Mills River. So uh, we have made tremendous progress with Mills River. I'm gonna show you a map. Uh, we're gonna come back to that. So we're kind of jumping around a little bit, but um, I, you know, and again, I'll talk about that a little more, but we've made great progress with the Mills River water treatment plant. So for those that can see, we're gonna shift back to North Fork. So if you remember, uh, the original image and video that I showed was two days after our crews were able to get there and began the repairs. I'm going to back up one. So that's where we were on September 30th, a 25 foot. Um, it's I don't know if it's a ravine. It's, it's just a, a lot of earth is, is gone. So um, this is what it looks like on October 3rd. And what you can see is the process of putting the 36-inch uh, distribution uh, water main back together. You see large equipment there moving moving pipes and, and installing those. And again, we are we are going to install that deeper than it was, and we're going to armor it and make it more durable for the future. And you can even see they're beginning to backfill. So we're, we're returning this to what it was uh, prior to Tropical Storm Helene arriving. <coughs> So that's an important connection for our community. If we can get that 36 inch bypass water line uh, reconstructed, we're gonna be able to get water from North Fork water treatment plant into the distribution system. But I'll caution, and I'll show you this in a minute, we have a lot of work to do on the distribution system and we still have to be able to treat the water from the North Fork Reservoir. So the next image that I'm gonna show is actually a video. And so we also directly from North Fork water treatment plant we have an eight inch line that provides water to Black Mountain. So that's another priority for us. 
Um, what you can see on this video is significant erosion. Again, I remind everybody, uh, these pipes were buried in the ground. So this, this is the amount of erosion that we experience for a water distribution system. And what you see, the people that can see this, is we have a crew from the city of Greensboro. This is September 30th, right? So this is two days. As soon as we could get access, we had a crew from the city of Greensboro repairing that eight-inch line to Black Mountain. Uh, and I do want to thank Mayor Nancy Vaughn and Water Resources Department Head Mike Borchers. Uh, they called us. I, I don't even know if the storm had stopped yet, ready to send us support. So th this is another municipality in North Carolina that are here rebuilding this line for us. Um, this line, I don't have, I'll have a shot later. This line is substantially uh, rebuilt. They're backfilling it. So we've made great progress with this eight inch line, at least from the section from North Fork moving towards Black Mountain. And of course, Black Mountain, they're making their repairs from Black Mountain towards North Fork. So again, this, this is September 30th. So we're still on Monday. And, and for those that can see, uh, you can see these are employees that are, that are waist deep in water and mud. They're soaking wet. And this is what the work looks like to restore these water lines. It's hard, grueling, dirty work. So that, that's where we're at with North Fork. So what I, what I wanna do is take a minute to talk about the distribution system. Because again, we, we have to get water out of North Fork, but we have to get it into the distribution system. So what we're looking at here is a drone video. This is along uh, Old US 70 at Whitson Avenue Bridge. We're starting at Whitson Avenue Bridge where it crosses the Swannanoa River. And this is the old US 70 roadbed. This is September 30th. So this is that Monday when we got there. When we could get there, this is what it looked like. Not only are the water lines gone, but the road's gone, the roadbed's gone. So this is where we started. And I'm gonna let this video just run. And so for those that can't see this, we're, we're moving from Whitson uh, Avenue Bridge along old US 70, and we are moving west towards Asheville. These water lines along this roadbed are major east-west connectors for our water system. We have to get these water lines established to get water to Asheville. And you can see the condition. What, what most of the road was destroyed. What little is left is having to be removed. The rest of it, we, got, we had actually finished demolishing it. So you see, we have to remove everything at first. You see the debris. So what you're seeing right now looking west is the work that's occurring. This is a combined effort from NCDOT and the contractors that the city contracted with. So all these crews were mobilized on Monday. And we're turning the drone and we're gonna go back east towards the Whitson Avenue Bridge. And again, for those that are listening, I can only say that the destruction is severe and you can imagine what it's gonna take to rebuild this. And our drone is, begin, is gonna begin to move back towards Whitson Avenue Bridge. So we're moving east. And you can see, we see equipment that's removing debris and stacking it, then that's gotta get taken off this, this roadbed. And we're gonna do this all the way to Asheville. And we're not working just in this location, we're working all along this location. You see some, some workers there, I'm sure they're just taking a break. Uh, but that pipe you see, that is old pipe, that is destroyed, it's not usable, it has to be removed. And you can see as we move towards the bridge, look at the level of destruction that exists. And this is because that water, when it gets to the bridge, it chokes, and when it comes out of that choke point, it speeds up in velocity and it just rips the road and the earth away. All that has to be rebuilt before we can even think about putting water lines in. And again, this is September 30th, and you can just see the level of destruction that exists. But I have good news. This is two days later. It's remarkable, actually. So again, we have a drone that is flying east towards the Whitson Avenue Bridge. And I'm going to let this loop for a second so you can see the progress that was made in two days. They, you see new water line laying on the ground. We were able to get materials here that quickly. Uh, and what the public, if you can't see, what we're seeing is 
a lot of the debris has been removed and we're seeing the reconstruction of that roadbed. Again, we've got to get the roadbed built and stabilized before we can begin to install a uh, new pipe. And I just, just real quick, uh, the city of Asheville has 18, 1,800 miles of waterline pipe. Not all that's damaged. So I just, you know, a lot of it isn't, but some of it is. If we were to lay that pipe end to end, it would go to Miami and back again. So when we re when we repressurize this water system, we have to pressurize eighteen hundred miles of pipe and fill every storage tank we have, which I believe is close to 40, 40, 42. So we've got to fill all that with water and pressurize it. So I'm going to move to the next slide. I have a series of stills. I'm going to show you three still images. So this is at the Whitson Avenue Bra Bridge, excuse me, we're looking west, and you can see new pipe being delivered and contractors, as they build the roadbed, beginning to place and install that pipe. This is 24 inch water line. This is critical. So we're still on October 2nd, and you see they're having to do this through the debris that exists. This is the next image. You see that debris is beginning to be removed. You see the roadbed is beginning to be reconstructed, which allows us to put the pipe in. If you look to the right where the, where the person is walking, that's a portion of the old roadbed. So that's kind of where we need to get to. Now I'm going to go to the next still. And this is looking east across the Whitson Avenue Bridge. And again, what you see here is we've gotten the road. The earth is to a point where it is even with the original roadbed. So this is October 3rd, right? So we, we are now three days out from the first drone video that I, I've shown you, and you can see what this looks like. And where you see the, the fresh soil that's, that's kind of leveled off, that, that is where pipe has been backfilled. That pipe is, doesn't have water in it yet, but it is ready to receive water. And we're going to do a couple more stills from October 3rd. Actually, we have a video. I'm sorry. So um, I'm going to let this run a little bit. So we are three days out. I'm going to let everyone see what the progress was in three days. The drone is flying from Whitson Avenue Bridge west towards Asheville. You can see the reconstruction of the roadbed, the stabilization of the bank. These are DOT, NCDOT crews as well as uh, crews that the city contracted with. And you can see the progress that's being made. Again, a lot of the debris is out of the way. The new pipe's getting laid down and prepared for installation. So for those that can't see this, I apologize, but for those that can, you can see the tremendous amount of progress that was made in three days. Another steel image from October 3rd. Again, this is looking west. Now you can see the entire old road bed is removed and we're building the new bed, road bed back up. Same day, October 3rd, and you can see now we have the debris removed. And if you remember how severe that erosion and damage was as we approached that bridge at one of the original drone shots. So for those that can't see, I, I think you would describe the progress in three days as absolutely remarkable. Again, I've got another still that just still image. It just kind of shows the connection to the bridge getting us off old US 70 towards um, Interstate 40. And that brings me to where I was going to talk. So that, that really, I think what I've just shown you is just a small example of the scale of damage that occurred and our major transmission lines that get from the mills, or excuse me, from the North Fork water treatment plant to the city of Asheville. And again, we are not working in just one section. We are working in all the sections. So this is just just an example of what we're having to do. Um, I did talk about the Mills River water treatment plant. And for those that can't see, what we're displaying now is a map of our water system. I highly encourage you not to go try and find your street on this map. This is approximate. Water, water does what it wants to do. So there's no way that I can tell you exactly where the water is. 
But what you see on this map is we have an area that is shaded in blue. That is Mills River. We feel very confident about getting water into that part of the system, pressurizing it and testing it and trying to find a time when it's safe to be potable again. I cannot give you a timeline on when it will be potable, but just know we are making good progress. But also need folks or everybody listening and folks that can see, we have a lot of work to do to return water to what is basically 80% of the Asheville water system. And with that, I'm concluded. And again, I uh, just want to thank, I do want to thank our public works crews, NCDOT, uh, our contractors, and our water department who are doing this work every day. Thank you.